Hey everyone, we are up to book 39 called Jessica and the Money Mix-Up, which should really be called Jessica's an Idiot. So this book, let's just read the back cover. When Jessica Wakefield's father asks her to run an errand for him, she jumps at the chance. Well, that doesn't sound like her. It's the perfect opportunity to prove to her dad that she can be trusted. All she has to do is de deliver an envelope of money for a charity to Mr. Hopper, who lives three blocks away. What can possibly go wrong? Uh, everything. Starting with the decision to let Jessica deliver money. Dad, do it yourself or let Elizabeth do it. Jessica is not your best option here. You know what else is not a good option? Having $500 cash in an envelope. Supposedly, it is charity money that dad has been collecting at work, which makes even less sense. If you're giving that much money to charity, and I put it into the inflation calculator, $500 when the book was published is about $1,100 today. If you are donating that much, you do it by check. You need a paper trail. You need receipts. You don't stick cash in an envelope. What is this, Ned? Some low budget drug deal under the table lawyering? I don't know. It's bad. <sighs> Jessica, of course, gets uh, distracted by Carol and Pierce, and because they're 12 year olds, they decide to sit on the curb and talk for a half hour. Why couldn't Jessica say, hey, Carolyn, let me take care of this first and then we can talk? Or, hey, Carolyn, why don't we walk and talk so I can drop off this envelope? But no, Jessica makes a poor choice. When she gets home, she can't possibly tell dad what she did because that would end our story on page 30. Instead, she hides the money in an old tennis racket, which isn't belonging to any of the Wakefields, and then she goes on a wild goose chase all over town, and, well, surprise, Dad had the money in his pocket all along. And I get that it's supposed to be, like, a jokey ending that Jessica finds it after Dad drops it, and she tries to tease him, and it's just dumb. So, of course, our twins have their normal shenanigans of... They're going to start an odd job business. Like one of their jobs is painting chairs and who, who paint to us. <laughs> I can't talk today. Who would trust a bunch of 12 year olds to paint? It's like painting's miserable enough. And then you're going to let little kids do it. Bad idea there. And then they have to help a family pack to move. And it's like, this is just not appropriate work for our little girls. The, the best thing that they do is cut the grass and, Hilariously, they have to use a push lawnmower and it makes me feel like we're in Stony Brook and Don, our eco warrior, is doing it. So that only gets them $45. And then Jessica has this great plan that coincidentally her favorite radio station is having a thousand dollar contest. And wouldn't you know, they pick her, but she can only identify four of the songs and it needs to be five. And of course she knew the last one. She just misspoke. So it wasn't really her fault. She was just so excited that she messed up because nothing's ever Jessica's fault. Something else that was ridiculous is they, uh, the boosters decide they're not exclusive to football and basketball anymore now they're going to cheer at the track meet and i used to be on the track team it's not the sort of setting where cheerleaders even have a place if the track is being used and you need to be able to see across the field for a lot of the events where do these girls think they're gonna go and then jessica's moment of glory they have three girls kneeling on the on the ground two girls kneeling on their backs and then jessica standing at the top and i've also done some very little league cheerleading you don't let middle schoolers climb that high especially not without coach or other adults in the back spotting making sure they are safe i was trying to figure out the height on that and i think that would be classified as too tall basically the height of one child standing on the shoulders of another child. You can't go too tall in sixth grade. It just, it doesn't happen. But there's no rules in Sweet Valley and there's no adult oversight. So they do whatever they want. And of course, while, while Jessica is standing 
let's say five feet in the air. She is throwing her baton and she's also listening to her headphones to see if the radio station is going to call her. Elizabeth says, why don't I listen to it while you cheer? But no, Jessica has to hear her own name on the radio and then they don't call anyway. So it's just ridiculous. But I will say the girls are very much in character for this book. They're definitely not acting out of turn. They're full on fulfilling their stereotypes. Two things that I wanted to read, both from like the first chapter or two. On page three, when they're recapping, on the outside, Elizabeth and Jessica were mirror image images. Both girls had long, sun-streaked blonde hair, blue-green eyes, and wore the same size clothing. And I am shocked. The author didn't say they wear a perfect size six. That's like one of their main defining characteristics. Later on that page, occasionally, Elizabeth liked to spend time alone, reading a book or just thinking. And Elizabeth loved school, even the difficult subjects like math. And this book was published not that many years before that whole debacle with uh, Teacher Barbie, who said math class is hard, and everyone was up in arms that allegedly this is giving the wrong message to little girls, and it's just all overblown. And then in chapter two, page 13, this is between Carolyn and Jessica. Carolyn looked a little disappointed. Well, even if you won't tell me anything, she whispered. I've got something to tell you. She leaned closer. It concerns a certain seventh grader whose initials just happen to be BP. Jessica's mouth dropped open. Bruce Batman, she asked. What about him? I have very reliable sources, Carolyn told her. And they say Bruce is actually taking a date skating tonight. A date? Jessica echoed in amazement. You mean he's taking a girl? No, Jessica. I mean a guy, Carolyn answered sarcastically. Of course I mean a girl. <laughs> that passage has not aged well. Um, not so much Bruce, but uh, what's that terrible book? Sweet Valley Confidential or whatever that is written like 20 years after this drivel. And, you know, they, they're actually uh, more open-minded and there is a gay relationship in that book and it's just it's it, this book just did not age well none of them do really the next one is called danny means trouble it features danny jackson who is the star on the track team but he is such a bad kid he turned a homework assignment into a paper airplane can you just believe that so, I mean, this book is, it's just over the top. It's the twins being a mockery of themselves. And the entire story would have been solved in about three paragraphs if dad had the wisdom to not send Jessica on an errand with money. Or he could have called the guy and said, hey, did you ever get that money? Or if Jessica could have stood up and said, hey, dad, I had a problem. And she didn't even lose the money at first. She brought it home and hid it, thinking she's going to take it to him at 5 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday while he's going out of town. That doesn't make any sense either. If this is money for charity, and I'm assuming it's something to do with Hopper's job, what's he going to do with his money on vacation? Why didn't Ned send a check to the charity directly or send a check to Hopper and then he can deal with it after vacation? It kind of sounds like he's trying to spend vacation money. I can't talk. <laughs> it kind of sounds like Hopper is trying to spend charity money on his own personal vacation and that's not okay. So Jessica and the money mix up, it's everything you expect out of Sweet Valley. It was fine. They, uh, you know, our twins are a little out of control as is to be expected. They're 12. So I'll get to the next one soon enough. This one was a little delayed. I had, I was busy. I, I was out of town running a marathon and then I just, uh, got a stack of books from book outlet and I was honestly more interested in reading those for a while. I just needed a quick little break from these, but 
I'll get back in the Sweet Valley habit. This was Jessica and the Money Mix-Up. Thanks for watching. Bye!